talk about, let's get to Dick Army because um, there is a spectrum. There is a spectrum wherein you have sort of this um, symbiotic relationship in some respects between craziness and grifterness. And I think on some level, all great con artists have a pathology. Um, I think at one end of the spectrum, uh, there are people who have serious pathologies that can't really quite con uh, people because they're just too uh, over, the, uh, over the moon. Um, and so that brings us to uh, Freedom Works. <laughs> And the wonderful story of Dick Army. Now, you'll remember several weeks ago when the first story of Dick Army's payoff, or payout, I should say, came out, that he was getting $8 million to leave FreedomWorks. His salary had been $500,000 a year. He was going to get $400,000 a year for 20 years <laughs> to leave FreedomWorks. I said there is far more to this story. The notion that Dick Army just left and got a payout, and he, got, he left because he didn't like what was going on in terms of the, some of the organizational, uh, he had some questions about the mission, was of course, um, was of course not, uh, not nearly the tip of the iceberg. And it basically seems, according to the stories that have come out since then, that uh, Dick Army, in an interview with ABC News, where uh, the ABC News says he was winding down his, <laughs> his Wii Fit workout. Apparently, he does uh, workouts with <laughs> his Wii, which is fine. It's just a funny image. Army spoke frankly and at length about his dispute with Freedom Works. Now, this interview came out like two weeks ago. So he wasn't uh, completely frank. But um, he did say, that uh, the reason why this millionaire, billionaire, uh, Richard Stevenson, president of the for-profit Cancer Treatment Centers of America, stepped in and gave FreedomWorks uh, a bunch of money, including the $8 million that he committed to Dick Army's retirement um, until he's 92. According to Army, uh, Stevenson stepped in because, quote, I was... Uh, Stevenson was concerned I was going to resign from Freedom Works and sue them before the presidential election. He didn't want an uproar. We all understood that if I take any action that made it at all public, it would be press nightmare, and we didn't want that before the election. Well, he's not saying we didn't want that before the election. He didn't want that before the election. In other words, for those of you at home um, who don't understand the dynamic here, this is what is called blackmail. And I actually, uh, I, I mean, it's, it's blackmail. I was implying that I was going to sue Freedom Works, expose all your dirty lang uh, laundry before the election, and thus put you in the crapper. And so the millionaire said, well then, Here's a payoff. Don't do that. And so Dick was saying, <laughs> this is a quote, you know, Army, my family and I have heard your story about how you can't afford to retire and we want to help you with your retirement. That's what a uh, blackmailee says to the blackmailer. So it doesn't look like blackmail. And Army said, um, it was a deal he couldn't refuse. I can't stay here at Freedom Works. I can't work with people like this, and I can't afford to leave with empty pockets. He said his choice was to put in 10 years of hard labor to win control of Freedom Works when uh, Stevenson said to him, instead of hard labor, how about you never have to work again forever? How many people are going to have trouble making that choice at age 72? I got news for you. I wouldn't have trouble making that, uh, that choice at age 46. I will state right now, unequivocally, that if any millionaire or billionaire wants to give me $400,000 a year 
for the next 20 years not to do this show, I will accept that deal. Uh, let's make it 500000 and let's make it, let's make it 25 years. All right? You think I should go for a little bit more? Say once you're in the range, I don't know why you would undershoot. Right. Let's not let's not skimp here. Let's not nickel and dime. Seven hundred and fifty grand per year for thirty years. And I want I want that front loaded. Let's make it actually let's make it fifteen years. And if you do that, Sam will publicly endorse the Simpson Bowles Commission letter. Not that's official right. recommendation. That's right. Letter from the two old men that he doesn't like. That's right. I will do that as well. And I will also record some liners if you want to continue on with the show. <laughs> so then, uh, Dick Army's not done. <clears throat> Apparently, that Stevenson not very smart when he makes his uh, blackmail deals. He should have asked for a non-disclosure form. You get this money if you can never talk about Freedom Works again. Because it turns out somehow a Freedom Works internal document somehow got leaked. Right around the time the Dick Army did another interview with Media Matters. Which is basically like saying, hey Superman, thanks for the eight million bucks. I'm going now to have dinner with the guy who makes kryptonite. (laughs) And I've got in my hand a recipe to make even more powerful kryptonite. So it turns out from these internal documents and Dick Army's interview that FreedomWorks last year paid Glenn Beck $1 million to promote his stuff and to raise money with a return on investment of a net negative $650,000. In other words, here's a million dollars, help us raise money. He says, okay, and they end up raising $350,000. I have been saying for years that all of conservative media is completely Completely subsidized in this fashion. Completely subsidized in this fashion. Heritage Foundation works the same exact way. Some millionaire, billionaire gives them money. They shuttle it over to Sean Hannity or to uh, Levin. Freedom Works gets money from a millionaire. They shuttle it over to Glenn Beck or to Rush Limbaugh. And on and on and on. The notion that these are non-political money-making machines is a joke. It's a joke. It's a joke. So uh, there you have it. The fall of freedom works. Freedom's just another way of saying, if I can bilk a millionaire out of money, I'm going to do it. 